I know it's raining cats and dogs. There's heavy rain everywhere, I understand. Hi, Carla, Nelson, Erica, if you can participate, it's okay. Thank you. Hi, teacher. Hello, Carla. How are you? Uh, I am fine. I I just arrived to my house because I went at the doctor and the traffic is terrible. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm just giving some time to your classmates. I know it's raining really bad everywhere. And that has affected the the, um, the internet connections, the light, electricity services. Hi, Ruth. Good evening. How are you? Hi. Mr. Linares, what do you mean? Is it raining? Yes, very hard. Oh my God. When, when it's raining really hard, you say it's pouring. It's pouring. It's pouring. It's raining cats and dogs. It's pouring. Okay, oh my God, I'm just making some time, but I know that many of your classmates are having problems with um, the internet connection and the rain, I know. So let, let's just have a conversation while we wait. What do you remember about yesterday's class? What was on yesterday's class? Well, it is what it is. So I need your help. If you can participate on the class, please do so. Um,
Okay. Just a minute. Yesterday, teacher, we we made some exercise about not only and but also. Okay, yeah, we did exercises with not only, but also. That's true. And also you made a presentation, right? Yes, about um, on-site, online, off-site trainings. Online, oh yes, different types of trainings, right? Thank you. That is true. Okay, so tonight we are going to understand a little bit more about CPD, about continuing professional development. And that's very interesting, actually. It's a very interesting topic. We will get some vocabulary. And the topic for today, yesterday we talked about the benefits, the good, the good part of having trainings and today we have to talk about the negative effects of the lack on the lack of programs for professional development so first let's understand what is continuing professional development cpd continuing professional development to do that we are going to watch a short video which is in your book, is the first link on your book. And it's exactly about what is continuing professional development. I need you to watch the video, but turn on the closed captions. Okay, uh, voy a ser bien enfático en eso. De ahora en adelante, cuando vean un video, enciendan los closed captions, eh, los subtítulos um, autogenerados de YouTube para que puedan ver el vocabulario utilizado. En especial, si el video que les estoy poniendo... Bueno, yo siempre busco videos que, que se entienda el inglés, que no sea muy complejo también. Y si lo es, pues que sea relacionado al tema que estamos cubriendo. Ese tema es específico, es el, el video base para la clase de, de la unidad 1 y 2. Está bien, Erika, comprendo. Tenga cuidado, por favor. Está lloviendo muy fuerte. Eh, bien. Entonces, eh, um, vamos a ver el video, traten de, de buscar vocabulario nuevo y no nos vamos a ir. Aquí nos vamos a quedar, les envío el link. Entonces, número uno, encender closed captions. Número dos, encender, uh, tomar nota de vocabulario nuevo. Lo digo en español, por primera vez vamos a hacer este ejercicio, entonces así será de ahora en adelante. So, the link is on your WhatsApp, so you can watch it and it's just six minutes almost six minutes okay there you go so mute your microphone and let's watch the video
Okay, I'm done. Let me know whenever you're ready. Please let me know whenever you're ready uh, so we can discuss the new vocabulary on this. Well, we can discuss the video and the new vocabulary on the video. Just let me know. I'm ready, teacher. I hear two words embrace and cascade throw hooks. Throw hooks. Hold on, embrace and? Cascade throw out. Scale through. I got you. Scale. Uh -huh. S-C-A-L-E. Scale and then through. A través. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Scale through. Yeah, yeah I, got, I got the first one, embrace. Uh-huh. Okay. Scale through embrace. Okay, let's wait for one more of your classmates and see how they do. I have eth ethos. Ethos, yes. And SWOT. SWOT, S W O T. Strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Strengths, 
witnesses, opportunities, and like foda. Threats. Yes, in in Spanish is F O D A. That's right. Oh, okay. And misconception. Misconception. Yeah, yes. that, that. I'm sorry. Misconception. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like that word, misconception. I I use it a lot. I'm sorry. There's a misconception. There's a misunderstanding. This is not clear enough. Thank good job. You. Good job. Okay. So this is what I got. And I just included your, um, your vocabulary. Let's see. I have embrace. What do you understand by embrace? Predicar. Pre predicar. Es que creo que por ahí decía que los directores deben de predicar algo así como con el ejemplo. Bueno, eso no. Yes, part of the translation is uh, is predicar, but mostly is like when you do something yours, when you um, how can I take this? It's similar to hog. It's a synonym of hogging, but you make something yours and then, yes, you can transmit it to others. It talked about directors leading by example, right? Truth is true. Directors leading by example. That is true. So embrace, predicar, por ejemplo, right? But first, you got to make that yours. Eh, cuando enseñas a otras personas, si tú no te crees lo que estás enseñando, mm, no funciona. Está comprobado. Cuando sos gerente, si no sabes eh, realmente, no has experimentado lo que estás transmitiendo, no va a funcionar. No se va a transmitir bien el mensaje. Hay una cierta mística en eso. Ok. Ajá. Embrace. Ethos. What do you understand by ethos? There's certain ethos on the English classes, on this English classes. There are certain ethos on these English classes. There's a distinctive character. This is why I put it there on the chat. It's something unique about about this um, situation, about the topic. Something distinctive. Okay. Enhance. What is a synonym for enhance? Anybody? What is a synonym for enhance? No idea. A synonym for it. No idea. Hence, is improve. Improved. To to do something better. To do something better. Okay. Uh, the next word on the list is myri myriad, 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 and it's a synonym of multiple you know there's many there's multiple numerous there's numerous examples multiple examples there are many examples there is a myriad there is a myriad a bunch of as um adriana said swat okay strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats the next word, seek feedback. Seek feedback. All of these words are on your Zoom chat. If you notice, I just typed in on the on the Zoom chat. Seek feedback. What do you understand by seeking feedback? Seek 
Okay, a synonym of seek will be to look for. Look for. Search, look. Okay. You can tailor it. You can tailor it. It means that you can do things to fit each situation. For example, right now, I'm tailoring this class. I'm tailoring this class because there are seven students, but nobody's participating, so I have to tailor the class because of the circumstances. Les estoy explicando esto. He tenido que encajar la clase a lo a lo que hay, ¿no? No todos pueden participar. Eh, comprendo eso, pues tengo que hacer lo posible por mantener la clase. Ok. So, uh, voy a hacer el listado de asistencia. Las disculpas, se me fue la piscucha. Antes de continuar. Adriana José Serna Durán. Present. Daniel Antonio Luna. Erika Jazmín Martínez Carpio. Ahí está Erika. Ok, Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Present. Thank you. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Ok, Iván Petrovic Guzmán Aquino. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Jolman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Jolman, ahí está Jolman. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present teacher. And sorry because I have a problem with my eyes. Oh, ok. Sí, espero que siga mejor. No se preocupe. Thank you. Ok, Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Nelson Antonio Herrodas Rosales. Ahí está Nelson Antonio, me decía que tenía problemas con la conectividad. Ruth Isela Joaquín Flores. Present. Thank you. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Y Vanessa Noemí Reyes Lemos. Bien, quiero detenerme un segundo para dejar grabado esto. Eh, muchos alumnos se han reportado ausentes eh, en su mayoría por problemas con la conexión de internet o problemas de electricidad debido a una fuerte tormenta en El Salvador, no es solamente en San Salvador. Eh, este problema se reportó a administración, pero eso nos ha dado la instrucción de continuar con la clase con los alumnos que pudieran conectarse y pues agradecerles a todos los alumnos que se han conectado, han hecho el esfuerzo de estar acá. Trataremos de continuar la clase con normalidad. And that's it. <laughs> no more Spanish. <laughs> that was the commercial. Okay. Give me just one minute, please.
Okay. Sorry, guys. Disculpenme por la demora. Se le estoy enviando un mensajito. Okay. Good. So let's continue. I was saying about the vocabulary. So we were on seek feedback. Okay. Tailor it to do something to the best possible fit. To do something fit. Okay. Uh, hacer algo a la medida. Rip. What is rip? R E A P. Okay. To collect to collect, to harvest, to harvest, cosechar. Interesting. Okay, one size fits all approach. I love this phrase. We will study that later. If you haven't studied this, these are hyphenated concepts. Hyphenated concepts. What is a hyphenated concept? It's just that, it's just words gathered or put it, put it together, written together, I'm sorry. Words written together, separated by dashes, by these little hyphens. That's another way of saying um, <clears throat> dash hyphen. Hyphenated concepts, hyphenated words. And I love it. She said, there is no one size fits all approach. There's no one size fits all approach. So there is no approach that fits everything. You always have different audiences. Like right now, this is a whole different audience than yesterday where everybody was participating in everything. Okay, scale through. To scale, this is a word that is becoming trendy um you have selling um, a scale selling scales scaling business scaling business is is a concept of growing a scale is just a synonym of growing okay but when you scale you do everything at the same time when you grow you go one step one step at a time when you grow. When you scale, you just have one model of business and you replicate it and you go growing. Growing, replicating your business model. We will see that as well when we talk about marketing. It's very important. And lastly, as um, what? Adriana? Yeah, there she is. As Adriana Jose was saying, um, misconception. A misconception, a misunderstood concept. Okay, so what was the video about? What is CPD? No, CDP. What is it? Okay. What is CPD? CDP. Continuous <laughs> professional development. Yes, yeah, CPD, right? CPD. What did you understand? What is it? What is continuing professional development? I said it yesterday. Exactly, it's to grow. As I explained to you yesterday, um, I was asking you, if you are a manager, can you grow? What do you do after being a manager for 10 years? I don't know. Um, well, there's nothing else to do than study, becoming better, improving your skills, which is something, which, which is always a possibility. It's always a possibility to continue growing. And that is continuing professional development, basically. Now, she also mentioned, um, she said something. 
about yesterday's topic. She talked about the different training methodologies that you could have. She mentioned some of the training methodologies and how you can do different things. It's not just about reading a book to become more knowledgeable. It's also how, uh, to choose the right path, okay? To choose the right path on what to do. And to understand this a little bit better, let me move on with yesterday's presentation. Si comprendo que la mayoría no pueden participar, no se preocupen. Eso será una tutoría más que todo. Okay, so talking about uh, yesterday's topic, uh, let's continue. Yesterday we finished talking about the different professional development trainings. We talked about on-site trainings, online trainings, and off-site trainings. This is self-explanatory. Self self-explanatory. Oh my God, my tongue. Self-explanatory. You can um, understand it just by the name. On-site trainings are trainings that you take at the work at the workplace okay on the job trainings mentorship programs and job shadowing these are like the three most common that are others that you can do online trainings this could happen at home or at work as well as, as someone explained yesterday you could be taking on a webinar you know at your job a virtual conference or very common nowadays an online course online courses are like the trend right now off-site trainings um they are not so popular because of what joel was explaining yesterday joelman was saying yesterday uh that people get sleepy you know they don't participate they turn off the cameras they fall asleep if the class is boring, of course, they might do that. Seminars, and just to leave it clear, a seminar, there are two different kinds of seminars. The ones where you participate and the ones where you don't. Um, even if you participate in a seminar, chances are, chances are, um, that you you may participate individually through polls. Anybody knows what is a poll? No. 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 Encuesta. Okay. I said chances are that if you participate individually, it will be most likely through polls. Okay. Polls are just encuestas individual polls that's a, like common oh this is not translating as as encuesta hold on uh no it's, it's it's where you vote you know hold on where where everybody votes yes no maybe you're giving a set of options that's an encuesta right It's a survey. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's the right thing. Paul, P-O-L-L-S, yes. Why is it not translating? That's weird. I'm double checking my knowledge, sorry. So, <clears throat> so most likely if you participate individually, it's gonna be a poll. If you participate in groups, those will be discussion groups, just the way we do here in the class. I send you in small groups, you practice, you um, have a discussion with your classmates about any concept, and then you bring the idea to the group, to the whole group. So that that's a group participative seminar. It's very similar to a workshop. A workshop, is when you're given an idea and you have to develop it with a group of people that you don't know, or you may know, they may be um, workmates, you know, uh, workmates, um, what's the other way of saying 
oh, co-workers, co-workers, workmates. And a workshop is just to put hands on, to put hands on, do something with your hands. Lastly, you have industry conferences. When you hear the word conference, you are not participating, most likely, unless the speaker makes a question and addresses to you the question, you know, it goes like, okay, Fatima, whatever, Carla, give me this concept. And you go like, okay, uh, okay, good. And, and he continues his speech. That's a conference. What's the difference between a virtual conference and an industry conference? The name. Um, a virtual conference, of course, is like this one. I'm doing a conference right now, basically. <laughs> It's like a, um, a self-talk. <laughs> I don't know, monologue. Okay. And an industry conference is just the name. The name says it all, industry. Um, there's a conference on how to do things. That's boring. Okay. Let's move on. So how to choose the right professional uh, development training. To understand the pros and cons I'm just going to give you this vocabulary to understand, and I'm going to say to better understand the pros and cons of having uh, professional development trainings at work. Let's um, see the stages on how to choose the right training. Number one. You need to define your goals. What do you want to achieve through professional development trainings? What's your goal? What do you want to reach? Identify your specific objectives and goals. So be very specific. This is very important. I'm telling you as a manager, um, it's not easy because typically we tend to we tend to see the whole picture, you know, the whole scenario. And then we think that the whole thing is a problem, is, is, the, is the goal, you know, is, is what you want to resolve. When in reality, it's a small thing. Um, an absurd example, a mere example, will be getting underweight. You're fat and you want to get underweight. What is the problem? What is a real problem? And you have to be clear and honest. Is it that you're sick and you have to get underweight? Or it's just, I don't know, it's just you, you, you just want to get to lose weight. Okay, because there are two different ways of losing, losing mass, you know, getting underweight. You can... Get on a diet or go to the gym, right? But it all depends on what you want to achieve. Do you want to be fit and strong or do you just want to be healthy? A person who wants to get on their weight and be fit will go to the gym. Work on muscles. A person who will like to do this for health will go running. They will do a lot of running and they will get thing like that really quick. But no muscles, no muscles. It's just being healthy. That's all. So define your goal. Where do you want to go? Number two, assess your skills. Take an inventory of your current skills and expertise to see where you could benefit from further development. So if you continue developing yourself, what benefits will this bring to you? Why is this important? Well, if I couldn't talk English, if I couldn't speak English, I will definitely develop that skill. That will be my main, my main goal uh, because I will say, you know, I don't have this skill. And based on my job, I need, I need another language. Okay. Um, 
and one more thing, let's say at your job, you see that you can grow in any direction. Let's say you are the secretary, Imagine, picture this, picture this. You're the secretary from the administration. You're the main secretary. And you finished your career, but your career was on languages. So you know that you can grow, okay? You know English, but you don't know about administration. So what do you do? And that's the only requirement to grow to human resource, to accounting, to sales, anything you want, but you need to have a career on business administration. So the most logical path to follow will be becoming a business administrator. Simple, okay? Assess your skills. Number Peter, three. Can you repeat the pronunciation assess? Assess? assess. That's it. Assess. 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 A synonym of assess is test. Test. Measure. That's another one. Measure. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Research your opinions. Explore different training options such as classes, workshops, or online courses, and compare them based on factors like cost, schedule, and content. Again, you have to choose something, a path. You have to choose your learning path, okay? What's your course? What's your direction? And when you start doing this, it's key. This is key for you to identify what fits you better. I'm gonna write this, I'm sorry. It's key, crucial to identify what fits you better. Okay, it's key or crucial to identify what fits you better. Why am I saying this? Because the first thing you have to do is this. What, what goes better with me? I'm lazy. Yes, I'm lazy. I'm not organized at all. Uh, I don't have time. I, 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 I mean, I have too much work to do. The only time that I have for myself is between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. So do I want to sacrifice the only hour I have every day to develop myself? Hmm, well, this bring me money. This will bring me good money because I will, I will grow in the company or I will get another job. That's good. So let's sacrifice that hour. Now, what do I do? Do I go to a class? a workshop, an online course, what's the cost? What's the schedule of these classes? And what is the content? It's many different factors. Cost, okay, it's just $25 a month. I can afford that. Okay, um, schedule, mm, it's an online course, so I can take the classes at any time I want. Okay. And what is the content? Okay, yeah, this covers everything I need. Okay, let's take the course. Make sense? Okay. And the last one, talk to your employer. Discuss your professional development goals. Hey, boss, you know what? Um, I was wondering, I want to grow in the company and, and I'm, I know all I need is to continue my university studies with business administration because I can speak English better than any other secretary, better than any other uh, assistant in, in the office. And I know that if I become a business administrator or at least get the title, I know I will get a, a promotion. Can you support me? And then you ask for money, please support me, okay? Financially, 
talking, you know, give me some money. Let me go home one hour earlier every day. Okay, so I can study, I can go to the university. Is that okay? So you talk to your employer. That's the last stage. If the company is an open door company and they want to support you, of course, you're done, you're set. Okay, some tips. Actually, teacher, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> please, I'm please. Sorry, I just don't have a home. <laughs> Okay, actually, that's what it happened to me right now. The the step number four, because mm -hmm. for to be completely honest, I, I in my career, I never thought that I funk or uh, how do you say it? think but in past funk think think thought thought thought. Okay, I never thought to work in a call center. For to be completely honest, but I'm working there and in my area actually in credit in credit information and all of that so a few days ago a, a few months ago actually they hear me speaking english with a customer heard and i sorry heard me they heard me heard me they they, they heard me <laughs> speaking english with a customer and i didn't know do they know that i can speak english and the boss, my boss told me, would you like to continue learning English? Do you think it's going to help you here in a call center? And I tell me, and I, at the beginning, I was like, mm, I'm on time. I need to sleep. Actually, I'm studying at the university too. Mm. And it's like, uh, uh, uh. What's your but schedule? Like... <laughs> What's your schedule at the university? Uh, six and a half. A.M. to 8 a.m. Oh, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. 6.30 a.m. 6.30 a.m. <laughs> to? To 8 a.m. To 8 a.m. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Perfect. 6.30 a.m. to eight, or just 6.30 to 8 a.m. Okay. And okay. then mm -hmm. six and a half. Ah, oh, don't do that. 30 minutes. <laughs> 6 and 30 p.m.? No, 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 no. 6 30. Siempre solo decir los números, Erika. Siempre solo los números. Eso es lo más americano que vas a llegar con la hora. Es más, si está dentro del contexto del tiempo, la hora, si es mañana o tarde, si está dentro del contexto uh -huh. de la conversación, no decís a.m. o p.m. Just okay. 6 30. It's, it's 6 o'clock. I go to the university okay. in the mornings uh, from 6 to 8. Oi, I go to the university oh. in the mornings from six to eight. Simple. Okay. Simple. Good job. Okay. And what do you do after eight? Work. <laughs> but you have to transport yourself. Yes. Uh, my work it starts or begins uh -huh. at night. I am at, at nine. nine in the morning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And finish at six thirty. And, and finishes? Yes, finishes at six thirty. Six thirty, okay. Uh that's nine hours. Yes, but I but we have two days off. And the weekend awesome. and the week, yes. And I'm sorry, what call center is that? <laughs> 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 it's just that I, I work for a call center the same way. With financial, uh, well, we we do prepaid cards. We mm -hmm. we only treat with prepaid cards. I I'm on the fraud department, on the fraud investigations department. Yeah. So I don't take calls. I, I'm all my shift. I'm just gathering documents, giving money, removing money, making adjustments. Oh my god, mm -hmm. it's it's so <laughs> boring. You know, it's boring, but sometimes it's very interesting. You know. You find some weird cases or funny cases. Yeah. <laughs> and Don't then see. go home because my my, uh, my class, my university classes are online, actually. And then at night, 6.30 to 8, I have another class. And then here. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Wait, what and then, are imagine, you? Imagine, and, then, and then 10. Uh -huh. 10, 10 to 12 
at night, mm -hmm. I go to the gym to do boxing, to say I do boxeo. That's really late for doing boxing. What time do you go to bed? Yeah, uh, eleven um eleven thirty, almost twelve. Okay. Um have you thought about listen, have you thought about swapping? What swapping means? Lo que le acabo de hacer al carro. Swapping. <laughs> <laughs> Swap. Is moving this for this. Exchanging your shift. Another way of saying is shifting, but it sounds redundant. Shifting your shift. <laughs> that, that's uh, weird. So swapping your shift. That you will hear it on the call center. Let's make a schedule swap. Schedule swap. So mm -hmm. your day off is Wednesday. My, mine is Tuesday. We have the same schedule. So let's swap. Let's okay. swap or day or days off. You you will come on Tuesday. I will come on Wednesday. That's a schedule swap. Okay. It's a it's a, it's a change. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So have you thought about going to the gym in the morning and taking the online courses from six to what? Six to actually, eight. Actually, actually, I thought about it, but in the university, uh -huh. they have the specific schedule. Uh, but is it, isn't see. it online? Yes. Oh my Actually, God. it's like this. It's like this. Oh, so there, the, it's, the a, a, it's asynchronica. You have to be there at the same time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and all of your classes are like that? Not all of them, actually. Mm. Just a uh, um, Matemática Financiera. <laughs> oh, finance. I need to are you studying business administration? Yes. <laughs> oh my God, really? I love that subject. That was good. Okay. <laughs> how how many years have you been studying? Like I just need just just two more um materials. Two more subjects? Two more subjects and I gonna get the degree. What? Yes, just tomorrow. Congra so. Congratulations. Thank uh, you so much. Actually, this is my second career. <laughs> what? What was the first yeah. one? Uh, leyes. Laws? Okay. So you're a lawyer? Yes, I am. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, you scare me. Why? I mean, that's I awesome. I'm 28. And you're 28. Oh yes, my God. So at 18, you were studying laws and then you finish at 23. Now you're finishing your second career. Then you will get a master, most likely. Yes. Okay. Like in um, Derecho in Administrativo and um, Coaching. Oh my God. And I was thinking about to learn uh, Negocios Internacionales. Uh, wow. International, International business. business. Uh huh. Yes. Foreign, like foreign affairs. It. Did you like foreign affairs? Uh, what? Did you like what? foreign commerce when you studied law? Oh. Foreign commerce, commerce international. But just one, just one subject. Really? Just two. No, then, but I on mean, laws? Yes, two. <laughs> but it was an uh, extracurricular. <laughs> you know, when I was at Gavidia, uh, we used to argue with, I mean, there was like a competition between lawyers mm -hmm. and foreign affairs students because the lawyers used to go like, these guys are thinking they are lawyers too, you know, they think mm -hmm. they, they think they know about uh, Derecho Territorial, for example. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they think they know more than us, you know. They're just politicians. <laughs> they used to go, they're just politicians, you know. I was like, oh my God. It used, used to happen in every university, actually. I love that career. I mean, it was really good. A great experience. So, okay. I know. Great, great. 
Congratulations. Oh my God. I'm so excited for you. Take my number. Don't lose my number. Okay. If you need me, okay. if you ever need me, if you ever need me to translate any legal document or anything, just let me know. I can help you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. Um, thank you. Moving on. Tips for getting most out of professional development trainings. Um this is a trend, the smart goals. You know, I don't know if you have heard about it. I, I, I always trend, I tend to forget. I tend to forget. Oh, sorry. Look at my typing. I tend to forget. Tiendo a olvidar. I tend to forget uh, the, the meaning of this acronym, this acronym of SMART. SMART goals are a concept that started a few years ago. Okay, it's very simple. <laughs> I always forget it. I'll send you a little uh, picture to your WhatsApp because I would like you to have this handy. I think this is a good one. Um, specific, measurable, achievable, or attainable, relevant, and time-based. SMART goals, again, are a trend since like seven years ago. In 2016, we started implementing this all over El Salvador. And it helps a lot when you, if you want to apply it in any, any field, you can apply these SMART goals in any field because they work. Smart goals really work. When you want to set a clear objective, um, for example, the way it says here, before attending a training set, specific measurable goals for what you want to learn and how you want to apply your new skills. Talking about simple words, imagine that you want a car, picture that you want a car. What do you do? Do you say, okay, we're in what? Um, September, October, November, December. Three months. By Christmas, I will have a new car. Is that a specific goal? No. How can you make it more specific? By December 20th, 2023. I will have uh 2014 Toyota AI red a red Toyota AI 2014 by December 20th and just write it that's a very specific goal that's your goal okay is it attainable is it I'm sorry measurable see what it says is it measurable can you um Keep track because the, the next step is to find the plan. You know, what are you going to do to achieve that goal? So if you can measure in a daily basis, in a weekly or bi-weekly basis, how much money you will be saving, okay? Then you can realize if it is achievable. Can you gather $5,000, $6,000 by December? Yes, if I save three four hundred dollars a month i can make it okay that's too 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 few but it's just an example relevant it has to be something relevant that will change your life why do you need the car because i cannot continue traveling by bus it takes me four hours to go from point a to point b okay and time based as i said the date when is that going to happen okay that's a clear objective. Engage actively. Participate actively in the training by asking questions, taking notes, and sharing your experiences with other attendees. Other attendees. Like you are doing, Erica. Like everybody does in the classes. You know, if you participate and you share with others, then you are really learning. 
that's the only way to learn. It's not just about sitting, listening to a teacher speaking for two hours. That's not learning. Okay. And of course, apply what you learn during or after, I will say during, but after the training, apply what you've learned to your work and projects and projects, I'm sorry, as soon as possible to reinforce, reinforce, reinforce your new skills. If you learn something new here and you don't apply it out there at your job or in any environment, you will just lose it. Lo que no se practica, se pierde. Y si no lo practicas, pues nunca lo vas a aprender. Share your knowledge. Share your new knowledge, new knowledge and skills with your colleagues, colleagues and team to help spread, to help spread the benefits of professional development. Uh, bien. Sé que estoy hablando mucho, pero entiendo que la mayoría no puede participar. It's okay. En palabras muy resumidas, hay que tener muy claro qué objetivo se persigue. Hay que estar constantemente involucrado en eso. Eh, les ponía el ejemplo de ponerse fit, porque no porque esté de moda, sino que para lograrlo tenés que esto, engage actively, y estar involucrado activamente con una meta es, es hermoso eso es es otro rollo y te mueve y te mueve a diario estar pensando uy no puedo comer esto uy tengo entrenamiento a tal hora hoy va a ser hey, hoy es el día en el que voy a levantar más peso eh, y etcétera no te ayuda muchísimo muchísimo a um, aplicar lo que has aprendido igual poco a poco va desarrollando como cierto instinto. Y esto, no sé si han visto Fran Suárez, pero habla mucho de eso. El cuerpo tiene cierta memoria, ¿ok? Eh, tu cuerpo, eh, los músculos tienen una memoria y logran grabar los movimientos, todo. Entonces llega un punto en el que tu físico te empieza a pedir, a pedir más. Le metes gasolina que no es, o sea, comida que no tiene que comer, lo reciente, y eso se lo digo, o sea, por experiencia. Entonces, pero esto es un ejemplo burdo eh, en cuanto a tu trabajo, lo mismo. ¿Qué va a ocurrir? Ahorita estás acá, la mayoría no está probablemente poniendo atención, si están poniendo atención, lamentablemente no pueden participar por su internet, yo lo comprendo, pero va a llegar un punto en el que tú vas a encontrarte, como decía Erika, hablando su, con soltura en inglés, y te puedo apostar 100 dólares ahorita porque soy pobre. <risa> Igual lo ganaría. Va, más de algún compañero luego va a decir, wow. Se está hablando en inglés y le entendió el gringo. Wow. ¿Cómo hiciste? Ah, ok. Share your knowledge. Comparte tu conocimiento. Y así se desarrolla una empresa. Estos son beneficios que las empresas a veces no perciben. He eh, tenido el caso de muchos alumnos que me dicen, es que no me dejan ir a, la, a las clases de inglés porque eh, mi jefe no quiere que, que crezca. O sea, se nota que, que si yo crezco, pues no, ya no me va a tener y me va a perder, ¿no? De una manera bien burda de ver las cosas. Ok, pero suele ocurrir. Let's continue. Measuring the impact of professional development trainings. This is very important if you are in a managerial position, if you're a manager or a supervisor, you need to measure the impact on any project. If I was your boss in your company and I said, like Erika said, you know, go to a, an English course. What I will do if I was Erika's boss every day. Hey, Erika, good morning. Oh, are you? Good? Okay. Oh, listen. Good. You weren't. Awesome. Hey, you're learning. Good. Or no. Uh, uh, mm, are you learning? Mm, study. You see, measure, measure every project, not just the professional development trainings, but everything. And that's a way. Quantitative metrics. Quantitative. Quantitative. Actually, teacher, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go, go. I, I'll drink some uh, water. There, there are, I don't know if it's correct to say in the floor. 
Are they yeah. in the, in on, the product, that, on the production floor? Mm -hmm. On the production floor, uh, our boss tell. <laughs> and very funny order because every customer that is calling to us and if they speak English, they transfer the call to me to talk to them in English. <laughs> I I I'm actually I don't answer calls, but it's not maybe just two or three calls by day. Mm -hmm. We have that kind of calls because we are in, uh, our our call center is for a Latin American person, not specific in the United States. It's for the Latin American market, okay? Yes, like and some... not all of them are speaking English, actually. But maybe two or three calls by day, we receive an, an American call or American people calling, <laughs> just in English. Uh, are they real Americans? Because why will an American I call? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Actually, That's when funny. I when I ask them, can you give me the, your social number, please? Uh, yeah, 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 okay. And your name in your social and your social car is Maria quite a little bit different. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Or they, they uh, present, uh, or uh, how can I say it? Se presenta, uh, they present themselves. They introduce. They, they, they introduce, introduce themselves. Introduce themselves. themselves like a Joseph, for, for example. And in the social is Jose. John Joseph. Yeah, or Juan John. Jose. Yes, <laughs> yes. That, that's every day and every English call, but that's oh my God. And I just mute the phone and just left it. But you it know what? I was, I was watching a, a broadcast on YouTube. Well, it, this was on Univision, actually. They said that, and of course, this, this was coming. Thousands of Latin Americans moved to the States in the 80s, right? Yes. So their children now don't want to speak Spanish. They have problems because they don't want to speak Spanish. And they forgot about Spanish. They know some words in Spanish. But the funny thing is that they, they live in the States. They were born in the United States, but their names are Rafael, right? Uh, yeah. Kevin, <laughs> Oscar. Yeah. Right, and but they are American. They were born in America. That's so funny. It's difficult. It's yeah. can you imagine that? That has to be difficult. I mean, you cannot. I mean, oh my God, you are not Salvadorian anymore. You are American. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, you still have it. It's, it's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you just made me think about my cousins. I have a lot of family in in the states, from my mother's. From my mother's, there's a lot of cousins, and all of their kids are not Salvadorian anymore. Wow. Okay. So, um, how will trainings affect? There are ways in a company to measure the growth um, based on. Let's say you implemented a training. On a new process, well, numbers will give you the idea of of the real impact. You know, están asustando, perdón, chicos, o está temblando, o alguien me movió el oasis del agua y el agua se está moviendo mucho. Oh my god! It's a ghost. <laughs> oh my god! That was weird. That was really weird. Because I'm, I'm alone in the studio. Okay. So, continuing. So, it's a water metrics. gust. Yeah, a water gust. <laughs> okay. No. He's thirsty. It's okay, the ghost is thirsty. <laughs> I got you. So, okay, metrics. Sales. Your sales may increase. The production may increase. Customer satisfaction. Erika, I wish you the best and i'm sure that little by little more customers will ask for you this is common you know they will go like i just want to hear her english again you know what i i i like the way she speaks 
and I know she's improving, so they they will do that, you know. Um, and that's that's an impact on your professional growth. Hopefully, you you get to experience. You will get to experience this. Okay, qualitative, qualitative, not quantitative, but qualitative feedback. Gather feedback from employees and managers about their experience with professional development trainings to identify the strengths and areas for improvement. As I told you yesterday, re-engineering re uh, is a passion for us, for, for industrial engineers, because there are always ways to improve. There are always areas of improvement, areas of opportunity. Nothing is perfect. There's always a, a better way of doing business. Um, career development, look at the long-term career development of employees who have participated in professional development trainings to assess their impact on your organization's talent development pipeline. That's a long term, hold on. Uh, talent development pipeline. Un consejo, cuando veas un nuevo término, no escribas todo uh, perdón, solo el concepto, eso de pipeline puede darte una mala idea del significado. Entonces es mejor ir un poco más atrás y escribir un poco más del término. En este caso yo busqué la traducción de Talent Development Pipeline, canal de desarrollo de talentos. Por sí solo canal no me hubiese dado todo el contexto, me hubiese costado más entender todo el concepto. Ojo. Ok, and that's basically it. Conclusion and call to action. Investing in yourself is the best investment you will ever make. It will not only improve your life, it will improve the life of all those around you. Hey, qué bonito. Terminó con un um, paired conjunction, meaning it will not only improve your life, but also improve the lives of all <laughs> those around you. I like it. Okay, and that was said by Robin S. Sharma. Si no me equivoco, este señor fue el que creó unas, ah, una cadena, de, una pirámide de negocios llamada Siri. Zri, Zri, Z-R-E-E. -E. Era la competencia de Natural Slim, Slim Fat Fast. No, Natural Slim, Natural Slim. Anyways, okay. Don't wait another day to invest in your professional development. Choose a training that aligns with your goals and take your career to the next level. So, okay. I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Let's move on with your book. There are two activities that we have missed and ta -ta -ta. so the first activity is to find the meaning of some concepts and this was on page nine and that's what we're going to do to find some concepts to understand better the pros and cons of uh, continuing professional development. Sorry, I'm trying to show you the screen again. Here. Okay, so this is page nine. You need to go online to find out more about the key terms in this lesson. Continuing professional development. You need the concept here. So Google it, career path, self-directed learning, and top-up top up skills. It's just four concepts. Um, I'm going to give you exactly 20 minutes. You can go online, find the definitions of each concept on page nine. And when we come back, I will ask the people on the class to give me the their findings, okay? Let me send this to your WhatsApp right now. 
¿Saben? No está lloviendo ya. No creo que sea un impedimento ya la lluvia. Pero bueno, ok. Let's continue. So that's page nine. Let's find this concept. And I'm going to leave them here on the screen. I'm going to continue sharing. So starting right now at 923, you have exactly 20 minutes to find these four concepts and write them down on the little charts on your page nine or your notebook.
I'm ready, teacher. Yep, 9.40. Thank you. Okay, so let's review the concepts. If you got them. We have continuing professional development in a few words. What is it? What is CPD? If you found a definition of continuing professional development. I, I have is looking forward and identifying opportunities to learn something new, refresh exciting knowledge, improve skills, or simply keep up to date with the light, latest latest uh -huh. latest developments within a particular profession or industry. Or industry industry yes, that's good industry yeah that's basically it i have it refers to the process of tracking and documenting the skills knowledge and experience that you gain is just developing yourself it's talking about personal professional development thank you okay let's go with career path what is a career path i i understand <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like a way or route that is like defined to achieve all your goals regard about your your career. Mm -hmm. And also I understood like the steps or job positions that you have to pass through to get on a specific position. It's like when you uh, when you want to become a senior, you have to be first uh, a junior. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. A, a career path in, in business terms, Ariana refers to the different jobs, as you mentioned, that you have to comply with in order to grow. And some called it a, a growth path, a growing path, because, uh, as you mentioned, and you know what? The career that I started, the technical career from within the form, it's called Empresa Centro. It has helped thousands of teenagers at this point. And it's really good because during the first six months, you study business administration. By the sixth month, you must have a job in an industry. A job that will start and it must start as a storage room auxiliary. You have to become an auxiliary of the storage room. And two, one, two, three months later, you move as the inventory person in charge, the boss of the inventory of the store, the storage room, let's say. After that, you move to the production floor, you move to accounting, you move to uh, purchasing department, see? Then you become the assistant of every manager on the, each department. And finally, you get to uh, assist in the manager, learning the functions of the manager. So the point is, in two years of this technical career, you go through every single stage of the company. At the end of the career, is up to it is up to the company if they hired you or not. Now, you get paid the half of the minimum salary. Okay? You get paid during the first year, you earn the half of the minimum salary. On the second year, starting your second year, you start getting paid the, the minimum salary. By the end of your career, if the company wants to continue with you, they get you a new contract and they may increase your salary. And you graduate. Having the experience of two years through all the positions of the company. Of course, there is a follow-up 
there is a bitacora. What is a bitacora? A journey. There's a journey that you need to fill out every day. Every day you leave some notes of what you learned. Can you imagine that? That was amazing. I, I love that. I love that technical career because I learned a lot about companies. It was really good. That could be a career path. <laughs> okay. Espero que les haya gustado la historia también. Okay. <laughs> so let's go with the next one. SDL, self-directed learning. What did you find? Anybody? For me, it's when you decide how to learn. When you decide how to learn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll see. To learn what? Whatever you want. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh. Wait. Ew. What country oh. was it? Some years ago, a very famous and popular country changed their educational uh, system. And now it is like the model of education because they let their toddlers, their to to toddlers or toddlers, toddlers, their toddlers decide what they want to study just the way you said it. Their toddlers decide what to study. So for example, a teacher during the morning says, you know what, go to the backyard, go to the yard of the school and bring something new that you found. So the kids will go, some of them may study the grass, some may go on a tree, find um, a rasp or uh, a worm, you know, and bring it to the class and make an exposition about what they found. Bill Gates in 2017 made an experiment. He put cameras on public schools. I think I told you about this. I can't remember if I told you about this, but they, they placed cameras so the teachers can see themselves on every class, you know, how they move, what they say, what approaches, what techniques work. And the best approach they discover is where students do what they want to do. So that has to do with self-directed learning. It is an instructional strategy where the students with guidance from the teacher decide and how, what and how they will learn. So um, this may work on trainings, on trainings, but not all of the time. Let me give you a quick experience. In 2009, I started working for Dell computers, Dell, Dell computers. And during the training, the first thing we did, uh, the trainer brought four XPS, uh, big computers, you know, and one Phillips screwdriver and one flat screwdriver. And he said, okay, go ahead, uh, undo the computer. And we started undoing things, you know, putting things apart, put everything apart. So we did, we removed the case, we removed the hard drive, the memories, the, the board, you know, the motherboard, everything. And then he said, now put everything together. And we were like, oh my God, but <laughs> and the training was <laughs> to learn how to put everything together and make sure that the computer works. That was, oh, man. Amazing. So hands-on training, do what you want to do the way you want to do it. Was really good. Okay, and the last one, top up skills. Top up skills.
I I read teacher is uh, our uh, are those are are those which are required on top of the general accepted skills associated with and with an occupation. Okay. Those which are required required on top of the generally accepted skills associated with an occupation. So the most important skills, let's come up with an example again. The inventory manager, you're in charge of the inventory. What skills should you have? What's the most important skill that you should have? To be organized. That's the most important. Organized is like the accountant, right? Accounting, same thing. Organized, what else? What do you think about math? Adding, subtracting, with basic math, right? But be good on basic math. That's important. And desirable skills, a desirable skill for a manager of inventory will be statistics. Good with statistics. Because and the inventory is like the heart of the company in a production company, you know, a manufacturing company. The inventory is the heart where you need to know what you have how much you have of what, and you can only control the minimum and maximums of inventory based on the on the sales um, projections. On sales projections, based on that, you need to have the stock of inventory. That's I know. This is a topic that ya vieron. De hecho, tendrían que haberlo visto. Basic six or basic five. Okay. Uh, well, those were concepts really quick. We're only missing uh, five minutes, about five minutes. What are the disadvantages of not having trainings? If you have learned today, um, there are different concepts, right? Uh, on the CPD. I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, CDP. On the CDP, um, there are different stages, but what happens if there are no trainings? If nobody is trained to do their job, what happens? If there's a lack of programs for professional development. Okay. The, the, the employees don't grow up in the company they don't grow there's no growth exactly employees don't grow in the company okay that's exactly right thank you carla adriana did you fall asleep erica don't let me down <laughs> Don't let me down. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, I was thinking about how to say it, and it's kind of um, you won't know, you won't know what are you doing wrong. What what you're doing wrong? You you don't you will yeah you won't know. I like that. You won't know what you're doing wrong. What you're doing wrong. How do you say this actualizar? You will be outdated. It's a, a beautiful word, yeah. Outdated. You will be outdated. Yep, you will be outdated. El Seguro Social del Salvador. <laughs> oh my god right <laughs> you know I, I had an appointment this week last week no this week and 
I saw the all the files here in Sakami. I mean, it's just the whole room fulfilled with medical records in in paper. Medical records in paper. Mine, my medical record there is is like this. It's not that thick. It's not that thick. It's very thin. But I have seen some medical records that go like this. This thick. A medical record. So I wondered, why don't they use computers? Why don't we have digital medical records? And what will it take to have digital medical records? And then I saw around me and I noticed one thing. All of the workers are elderly. Elderly. I'm not saying they are old. They are elderly. They are people who should be retired by now. And the young people, young people work on how do we, punto seguro? Okay, punto seguro helpers or clerics are teenagers. They are organizing people, you know, doing, I don't know, small small tasks, let's say. But the archives, the archives are managed by very elderly people. The same happens with the laboratory. Laboratory is old people who ha I have seen them all my life since I go to, to Sakami. They have always been working there. It's not being mean. It's not being bad. But we need fresher, you know, people. I don't know how to say this. We need younger, younger people. That's all. That's my opinion. I mean, that would be the development they need. They don't need to train them because I have seen doctors, doctors there like this on the computer. Okay, so le duele la cabeza. ¿Qué más siente? ¿A cuánto tuvo depresión? Ah, tuvo. Ajá. Okay. Siente ahí en la cama. Okay. Vaya, va a tomar acetaminofen. <laughs> so I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, ya no se puede entrenar un dinosaurio, right? I'm sorry, pero es la realidad. That's what I think. Don't you think? ¿Quién me, quién me está de acuerdo? No, no, yeah, okay. Good, let yes, me do that. <laughs> you too. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Sí, ya necesitamos un cambio. Ok, chicos, muchas gracias por haberme acompañado esta noche. Eh, que descansen. Dichosos los que van a amanecer descansando mañana y me levanto a las cuatro y media. Cuatro y media, no, mentiras, a las cuatro y cincuenta y ocho me levanto porque entro a las cinco. Me quedé en lejos la oficina. Teacher, what do you mean? Underly? The word. Who you say? Explain. El elderly. 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 Ahorita le escribo acá. Thank you. Elderly. Una persona de la tercera edad. Elderly. Elderly. Okay. Tonight. Eh, Será que Erika Jasmine se podría quedar diez minutitos. Just two. Yeah, let's yeah. just have a chip chat. Okay, guys, yeah. I'll see you on Monday. Today is Friday, right? Yeah, it's okay. I'll, it's Friday and the body doesn't know it. Okay, okay. I'll see you on Monday. The to the rest of you. Adriana Jose Serna Duran. Present. Thank you. Daniel Antonio Luna. Erika Jasmine Martinez Carpio. Present. Thank you. Fátima Denise Aguilar Marquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Iván Petrovic Guzmán Aquino. Jaime Raquel. I'm sorry. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. 
She's not here. Okay. Jolman Saul Giron Sanchez. Ahí está. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present teacher. Thank you. Hope you get better soon. Thank you. Lucy Nathalie Juarez de Ramirez. Thank you. Right here. Thank you. Nelson Antonio de Rodas Rosales. Por ahí. Ok, está conectado con ella. Ok. Ruth Isela Joaquín Flores. Present. Thank you. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. And Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Good night, everybody. Present. I'll see you on Monday. Thank you, Vanessa. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hi. Uh, no. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Okay. There we go. Turn on your camera. Come on. It's, the lights are out, actually. Are off. <laughs> really? Yes. Is it raining? I don't, I don't know. I think how, it's not raining. How come you don't know? How come you don't know? How come? How come you don't know? What? what? <laughs> uh -huh. what? How come? How come? ¿Te acuerdas de la prima de la tía de la novia de, de Mario <laughs> que se casó con la con la con la prima de la otra tía de, 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 de Fernando. No. How come? Como a Hugh. Oh, no. <laughs> 2000, no, quiero ver, ajá, 2002, 2002, 2003, estaba en clase de inglés dentro del programa este, de, de, okay. del técnico de administración de empresas industriales. Y, y me voltea, el profesor que nos daba matemática financiera y, y um, había otra materia, la de las ISOs, no me acuerdo cómo era que se llamaba, ahí veíamos las ISOs, este, nos daba inglés también, él, pero era bien elocuente, entonces para, para darnos inglés él usaba mucho biomecánica, o sea, movía su cuerpo y todo, ¿no? Y me hizo eso, me dijo, how come? Y yo, uh, yo ya como ja, jabón, vea, jabón. Yo, how come? Oh, what, what do you mean? Porque yo ya medio hablaba. What do you mean? How come? How come? Y, yo, y no me soltaba. Yo, hasta que no entendí. Oh, ok. I got you, I got you. Uh -huh. How come means, ¿cómo así? So, uh, I'm, I'm wondering... Um, About your boxing at night, really? Yes. <laughs> Actually, uh, when I was younger, mm -hmm. my dad teach me or taught me. Taught my me. My dad taught me. Uh huh. Taught me about to do exercise actually, because in our family we have that history of. Um, Overweight? Cancer? Cancer? Yeah, cancer. Yes. Okay. And the overweight is one of the most common sickness um, that begins. Uh, one of the most common... Wait, there's a word for that. Uh, symptoms? Symptoms. Uh -huh. Yes. To get cancer. So they, they taught me Tot, that's my tot, 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 okay, so he taught me about it, how to do it, and to be completely honest, <clears throat> like uh, six years ago, I didn't practice any, any exercise, physical exercise, anything, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, man, but you're on time, I mean, you're 28, I, I I'm, <laughs> I'm amused, I'm amused 
amazed <laughs> because I can't believe it. I mean, you're you're an example of person, you know. 28, two careers, you're going for more, you're at the gym, you're learning English. I mean, that's the... I can uh, speak Japanese. What? You can, <laughs> can speak, Japanese? speak Japanese? Yes. Japanese? Yes. Yeah, there's no dialect for that, it's, isn't it? No, Chinese is uh, Mandarin or Cantonese. So Japanese is Japanese. Really? Yes, I can. How did that happen? When I was younger, I used to saw anime, actually. Why, you know, when you say, <laughs> when I was younger, I'm like, five years old or what? <laughs> 10, 13. What? <laughs> kind of like that. I was, I was watching anime and I heard, heard, heard the, the, that language. And I think like that it was kind of a strong the sounds are sounds strong. Are really strong, stronger than German, yes. Yes, and I think how do I will a uh, a uh, how could I how do I will look? Uh, how could how I? Can I uh, or how will I look? How would I look? Yeah. Uh -huh. How would I look? Look, uh, speaking in that language, and that made me feel curious about the, that language. And I start learning. I go to the uh, national university, when? then to the UCA, mm -hmm. and I was learning. Like I have been ten years learning, and that's really heavy learning. Actually, they have three ways to write the same word. Are you learning and reading, writing? I'm sorry. Yes. R writing? Oh my God. Actually, there is a Romanji that is with our letters. The katakana that is more classic for to be honest. Uh -huh. And the hiragana. Yeah, me no me ganas. Is... A mí no me ganas. <laughs> <laughs> and the and and the, and the, there is another one way to write that I don't remember. There's one more, one more way. Yes. But it's more like more like Cantonese, kind of Chinese. Cantonese. Well, if I were you, I would have learned Cantonese or or Chinese simplified instead, because they they will domain the world, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah, it's, it's more how to say it? difficult. More difficult, yes. When Japanese... Yeah, I heard. I heard that. I heard that Chinese is so complex. Yeah, that, that's why that's why they're so funds. smart. <laughs> Thank you. No, actually, no, I really like I actually I really like the languages because imagine to speak to someone else that you even don't know anything about their country. Imagine you in twenty years. You are forty eight, you know <laughs> three or four languages. You are not thin, but in shape, let's say. You're healthy. You are healthy. You have three careers, you know, four languages. You're married, and you are teaching, you are teaching your children how to speak different languages. Actually, my little sister can speak Japanese. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes, actually, and my mom, she can speak Germany. German. Yes, German. You should learn German. German. You should learn German. Because I would it, like that. if you if you learn German and you know English and you know Japanese, these two will give you a job in a call center as a manager like that. Really quick. That that's amazing. I really oh my god, I'm impressed. But I'm married. <laughs> I'm married. I'm married. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but it, but it's something that I really want to learn. Actually, uh, my next language is for me is French. That's what I really want. Do you know French. French? French was the how can I say it is the old school language. Everybody, yeah. everybody sh in international relations, in, in foreign <laughs> affairs, you should know English, French, and Spanish in that order. Mm -hmm. English, French, and Spanish. Nowadays, is English. Uh, what is it? Chinese or or 
Cantonese, right? Mandarin, Mandarin and Spanish. Then you have French, and then you have German. In that order is like the or the, the world order nowadays. Oh my god. That's why I really want actually speak a lot of languages. I don't like that's why I really want. I don't like Dutch. Dutch, if you have heard Dutch language, uh, that's horrible. And Russian. Russian. That those are like what? Right? But Dutch I don't think Hollandese. I don't, I don't feel it difficult. What? Yeah. Imagine I cannot speak Japanese. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah, I got you. You have a very complex mind, and that's good. That's that's beautiful. You have a complex mind. That's good. Okay, thank you very much, Carlita, for staying with me. I really appreciate your time. I'll see you on Monday. You told me, Carlita. I, I, I'm sorry, Erika. <laughs> what? What am I? You're not Carla. Oh my God! I meant to say Carla. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. No, Eric. I'm sorry. Thank for you very me, much. Here in this course, teacher, to be completely honest, and not for to be your friend, not nothing at all. And for me, you're the the, the wonderful teacher that I, that I ever had in this course because the last teacher just. Send the video and watch it, and then just speak about it. And the next class, another video, and two hours with three videos and nothing to speak. And you teach us about the sounds. Actually, I was learning at the beginning when I was pretty young, <laughs> when I was 13 or 14, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. uh, someone told me that every language has different sounds. So, and it's so much funny because in Korean, actually, mm -hmm. you said, all right, that's a name. Yes. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. yeah I, I'm, it's, I'm, it's funny when I hear Chinese, actually, because I, many names and with Ling. Shuni, <laughs> <laughs> Shunlang. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many but, names are there? <laughs> that's this kind of teacher or, or this kind of class that it's, what I really enjoy, because I think that I really can learn the sounds. I have to say it. Desde pequeño yo he tenido algo que me gusta y la gente se queda extrañada. Es mi familia incluso. Que me quedo, ey, eso es arameo. Eso es hebreo. Eso es ruso. Eso es francés. Y yo, ¿cómo sé estas cosas? Digo, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué le atino? Cuando oigo hablar eso, sí, yo me quedo. No sé si te ha pasado alguna vez, pero es que es que bien raro. O sea, tú identificas el sonido y decís, eso está el idioma. Y ponemos atención, es como, ey, qué bien. Y por eso te digo, el holandés es como, ay, no, qué raro. <risa> right? no. Ya, ya me parece más el coreano. Eso sí. Ok. It's been coreano. my pleasure, Eric. I have to go. Thank you. No, thank you to you. <risa> bye bye. Good night. Go, go boxing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Good night, Erica. Bye.